So for whatever reason, I've taken an interest in Dolby Atmos. It just sounds so cool when I hear other people describe the experience of being in an Atmos room and hearing some of the great music that they love in full surround all around them. This video is about how to at least create some of that effect in your own humble studio. So um, I'm sitting outside my recording studio in my home and my clientele are singer-songwriters. And at this point in time, uh, it doesn't seem like the singer-songwriter community is really much aware of Dolby Atmos. They, ha they certainly haven't expressed any demand to me to be able to have their songs mixed in Dolby Atmos. But I think it's going to come, and, and uh, uh, I, I'm just personally curious about it. But I can't justify, from a budgetary expense uh, perspective, I can't justify spending fifteen thousand twenty thousand thirty thousand dollars on a, a proper Atmos speaker setup so what I'm going to show you today is how I crudely made something up which is not professional standard but it gives you the experience of it so up until I did this I was using headphones the binaural headphones and um, it's kind of cool but and maybe it's just me but it just doesn't really, it's not convincing to me. Uh, the sounds that are supposed to be behind me don't really exactly sound behind me, you know. So it's just like I wanted to be able to hear what it was really like in, a, in an Atmos room with, with speakers around me. So I got started on this whole path to surround sound really because I read an article extolling how wonderful it was to listen to the Beatles' Abbey Road album, the remix, uh, which was done in a variety of surround sound formats on a Blu-ray disc. I did, did a video about that a while back, how I converted my existing home studio to 5.1 without um, spending a lot of money. What I've done now, and what I'm going to show you today, is just adding four more speakers for the height channel. Uh, front left, front right, rear left, rear right. And uh, so now I have a 5.1.4 setup. And although that's still not quite the recommended standard, I'll explain why it, it gives you the effect anyway, uh, as long as you're using the proper down mix. So um, let's go inside and I'll show you what I got. So to recap from the previous video, I started off with the speakers that I have for my main monitors, the left and right, they're Yamaha HS8s. And for the 5.1, I added the center speaker, which is a Yamaha HS5. In retrospect, there's really too much of a difference between those speakers, so it doesn't the imaging doesn't hold up very well. And I would, if I did it again, I would get a uh, matching speaker, an HS8. And for the rear speakers, I'm using this pair of Yamaha Stage Pass speakers, and they have a nice full sound. They don't match the HS5s tonally, but they have a good full sound. And underneath my desk, where you really can't see it very well, is a subwoofer that I got from Best Buy for about 100 bucks that I use for the LFE. So what I've done is I've added on poles two additional speakers, which are actually old computer speakers. So they have eighth inch jacks and they're self-powered. And because we had an office that we downsized, I remembered that I had two sets of speakers. I added wire to lengthen the distance between the two speakers and to lengthen the power cable. So this is actually originally a seamless paper stand. This is the left and right vertical poles of it. I was using them to support acoustic blankets in my previous studio, and so I had this little wooden crossbeam with the hooks. I just used the wooden crossbeam to use gaffer tape to tape these computer speakers to. And for the rear two speakers, I've got a microphone stand sitting on the top of each of the <laughs> stage speakers and lashed to the top of the microphone stand is the other pair of speakers. One of the reasons why I wanted to use these funky stands is because I really didn't want to drill holes in the ceiling until I knew what I was doing and I consider this kind of a temporary setup. So this is a very temporary setup. Luckily, I already had 16 channels of I.O. between my Steinberg UR824 audio interface and my Digimax DP88. But I still needed to buy 
another optical cable, a breakout cable, and ultimately a patch bay. So as you probably know, the Dolby Atmos rendering plug-in requires to be inserted on a 7.1.4 channel, otherwise it won't work. But this is a problem because we only have a 5.1.4 speaker setup. So by default, the down mix is set to 7.1.4. It's not really down mixing at all. And so let's put that a saxophone in a, that I have recorded. We're going to put it down on the floor, down on the floor speakers. We'll move it up to the upper left. And as we pan it across, we hear it moving from left to right and then down. And we notice when we get to the middle of the side, we can't hear it. And then we go over to the other side, we get to the middle of the other side, we can't hear it. And we can see on the meters that the uh, left side and right side, there's a signal, but there's no speaker there, so we can't hear it. Now that's obviously not going to work, but the remedy is that we go up to the down mix uh, option and we change 7.1.4 to 5.1.4. Now all of a sudden we can hear it and we can see that the uh, side speaker meters are gone because we're not rendering to the side speakers anymore. This is the great thing about the Atmos mixer, uh, is that it figures out how to render your audio based on the number of speakers you actually have. So now I can pan it all around and I hear it all around me. Now just to be clear, I'm not saying that it isn't great to have the side speakers if you can. All I'm saying is that for the purpose of hearing the sound immersively in three dimensions, you can get that effect with a 5.1.4 by down mixing and letting the Dolby Atmos renderer place phantom images to the sides by using the mix of the front and back speakers. And of course, I should also show you that we can bring this up to the ceiling and then move it around. So we're getting it all over the place, all around, wherever I want to put it. I can hear it. And by the way, you're hearing the saxophone over my narration mic, so you're not hearing it in stereo or in surround sound. So I realize that this, from a professional standpoint, this little system that I've got here is laughable. But I think it could be considered less laughable if you think of it as a, an alternate way to mix. So uh, a lot of mixing engineers, I understand, like to mix on headphones. Andrew Sheps is one of them. And uh, I tend to do that too. I, I tend to mix mostly on headphones and then check what I'm doing on the speakers. Um, with the speakers that I have, crappy though they are, you can at least get a sense of the spatial aspect of the mix. But because the speakers are all different types, you can't get a good sense of the tonal quality of it. So this, the sense of space is very important because you want to make sure that you're not moving things so far apart that they kind of fall apart. You want the, the band to sound realistic. You want, you want the sound to be cohesive in a way, but you also want the effect of its surrounding. So I think the, having speakers like this at least gives you an idea of the spatial dimension of the mix. So the approach would be to use the headphones to get the tone right. And between the two of them, you can come up with something that should be cool. That's my theory anyway, it's my rationalization. So one thing that I feel comfortable about doing this approach is that it didn't cost a lot of money. So if I decide at some point to upgrade my speakers and add expensive amplifiers and what, what not, I won't feel bad about this initial investment because it really wasn't much of anything. Um, and I do hope that over time, as I learn more about mixing uh, in Atmos and what I need, then I can find my way to make intelligent choices about spending my money. And I hope that this whole thing inspires you if you feel like you would like to get more into Atmos and you feel like this is beyond me, it's, a, it's way out of my range. Um, just hope this gives you some ideas for how you can get started maybe. Anyway, have a good day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.